Hello, I'm Derek Pryor with Resulting, formerly a Gartner Analyst specialising in SAP. And today I'm in the Resulting STEM studio with Rob to talk about a really interesting subject, which everybody's dying to hear about, Rob. No pressure. And the subject is practical AI and machine learning. To say there's a lot of hype around the subject has got to be the understatement of the decade. Rob, can you explain this stuff? What's going on? I know you've been working on this for years, unlike others. What's really going on? Um, AI is, is emerged as the, definitely the, the term to coin, to throw around, and uh, everybody has a bit of FOMO. They're like, they see the benefits, but very few people are doing it. And so those, the, the big, the Google, the Facebook, uh, Amazon Web Services, and etc., Airbnb, Uber, they're all using proper AI, where they're taking large amounts of data and actually producing super interesting results from it but but the others whoever's doing that uh, they're not doing AI. they're up that they're rounding up from maybe statistics or machine learning but ai is is a different brand of uh, of concepts and um yeah people are trying to say that they're doing it but whether they're doing it or not and the capability to do it is there that is that's true there is a capability rob do you think this is Realistically, are we at the stage now where every SAP customer can get can benefit from this, or is it really just for leading edge customers? Is it, you know, how how, how would you answer that, that key question? I think everybody can do it because if you have large amounts of data, you can do AI, but organizing it in a way that AI can consume it is the hard part. Mm. Is you can't just there's no magic bullet of just okay we're going to do AI and throw something at it. It's going to magically do the thing that you, you know increase your bottom line or, or whatever. It's, it's not just going to do that. You have to have been organized before, know your structures of data, know how it works, where data comes from and to. And just like any other uh, company that's doing intelligent data, you have to know what, what's going on. You can't just suddenly be like an immature kind of data, undri undriven data company and then turn into an AI company. It's not going to happen like that. And if you think how Google's done it, they are organized around their data, very organized. So you've got to know your data. Do you have to necessarily have clean data? What have, um, nobody's got clean data. Surely everybody's got problems with some aspect of their data. Um, yeah, and that is one of the big problems, is um, being able to extract the signal from the noise. And if, you know, garbage in, garbage out. So if, you, if, you're, if your data is just full of rubbish, you've got to do a process to clean that. And that's, that can be automated using AI, mm -hmm. uh, using concepts around machine learning and AI and, and doing that. But um, you really have to understand what's going to come out and be very critical. It's called, so AI is part of data science. Data science has got science in the end because you know, it does empirical um, experiments and understanding the results of it. Whereas, and and the reason why, is, such as Google and Facebook, are good at it because then it's not mission critical. They're, they're returning data to a consumer and then they allow the consumer to make a cognitive thought. Okay, so when I search for, let's say, SAP uh, HANA, for HANA, like, I get a return result and then I'll be able to use my brain to like, you know, decide. So there's, there's only half AI there. They're still allowing the consumer to look but when in you know mission critical businesses that SAP currently like, obviously uh, supports, you can't have that effect. It, you know, you, if you need it to be right, it has to be right. And um, so Google is doing something completely different to what an SAP customer mm. would want to do. They would rely on it. Like 95% is not really good. You need 100% guarantee that the thing it's in in place to do will do it. Um, and that's one of the challenges because messy data equals uh, some kind of uh, error and what's the effect of that error. So. Right, so you've really got to be able to understand your data, make sure you're making the right interpretations based on good clean data. Yeah, and, and, and have a hypothesis, right? So you have a hypothesis and then you test it. Like does, it you know, does it do the thing we want it to do? And then have a system in place to know what happens when I put in new data, what about new different types of forms of data and ingest this, do that. And, you know, so it's a it is a it's a pyramid with AI being at the top 
and you know you have to build the platforms to get there. And everybody wants AI, but you know the the, the boring parts, you know, the classic BI, the moving ETL structures and ETL processes and moving things forward takes time, and AI can then happen once you've got that in place. But you can't just go to the top of the the, the tree. Okay, yeah. so this is fascinating. Mm. So let's say I'm a typical SAP customer and let's say I've, I've already done some data cleanup because I've found other problems. In the past. I've got a good clean data. I really want to test out some new hypotheses. Mm. Um, surely I'm going to need new skills. Aren't I going to need some experts like your good self to come in and, and help me understand the new techniques that I'd need to use? Yes, I mean, and this is where the, there's a big gap in that there are quantitative people out there, but they don't necessarily know what they want, you know, know what to do. They have the skill set, but internally in a business, you got you have to know what to you want to do and how to do it. What's the capability? How do we do this? Like classic da data scientists need to be told, you know, please follow this experiment, produce some kind of model, you know, but they're not going to just go, okay, you could do this. Yeah. So it's business side consultancy, which helps. Just like any other process, a company say, "Here's what you can do. Here's here's the 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 road to that success, and here's the skill sets that you need." And Fascinating. So, can you give some examples of um, the sorts of companies how they've used these techniques in the past, or maybe you can't name them because, let's face it, this sounds like pretty leading edge stuff to me. So, I mean, maybe you can give us to describe some of the projects which you've been working on. So, yeah, competitive advantage. I mean, it's really competitive advantage and that's what people are trying to get you get you know mature companies are trying to increase their revenue you know one percent their baseline and then you have small companies that are just trying to get up play with the big um, players and have that ability to automate where they don't have a, a large um, workforce and so I'm working with them uh, an e-commerce company and trying to um, trying to disrupt the some of the logistics behind moving uh, food around and so how can they price appropriately? How can they, um, how can they make the best price for by customer? How can they, they keep their margins at the right place? Um, and typically that would normally take a lot of crunching, a lot of people to have a look at these different routes or um, what prices were, were happening, seasonality, uh, predicting uh, peaks. Uh, when does a peak come? What's the, what's the trigger that creates a peak? And so this is kind of what we're doing with, uh, with this company is helping them have a better understanding of their universe and how that affects price or, or supply and demand. Um, and so, yeah, understanding their structure, consuming that structure, and then keep making decisions on that using AI. Rob, this sounds like really seriously high impact stuff that's going to be it's going to be a game changer if you get it right. So we've talked a lot about the the things which you need to to, to get going, um, but I guess a lot of people will be listening and thinking, yeah, but someone needs could, someone's going to try and sell me some software tools, and presumably the market's not that mature. And I mean, I've heard that companies like SAP, Google, Microsoft, are there others that sell software tools? Is uh, have, uh, how do we? Choose the right one. So this is the amazing thing right now is you would kind of be stupid to pay a license for any analytical software in some ways because the big players have open source. It's called open source and it's wonderful. So Google released TensorFlow, which is basically um, the, their deep learning framework. Okay, And the reason they probably did it, and I think, is because they could then put it on their Google Cloud platform so that people could do AI on their cloud platform. They're not, I don't think they're just doing it to help the rest of the world, they're doing it to sell their services. So all you need to be able to do is essentially spin up whatever servers on a cloud provider, whether it be Microsoft Azure, SAP, um, AWS or Google Cloud Platform, and then, um, and then run these open source frameworks against your data. Why would you why would you pay for closed uh, proprietary software? I mean, because it's being done, people are releasing it, and you, we just kind of absorb it, like a bit like a seagull behind a uh, fisherman's um, <laughs> picking up the guts. Right? But uh, I mean, it's, it's, it's incredible what's happening out there and what's available. And 
having your finger on the pulse is really important because it's changing at such a rapid pace. I mean, unbelievably. You know, last year, compared to this year, what's this just incredible amount. So uh, TensorFlow was, re I think it was released last year, and now we have PyTorch, which has really come out of Facebook, um, and you have all the kind of open source underlying products, which have been, you know, Hadoop changed the world about, I don't know, seven years ago. That's really gone. And now we have uh, open source products released by the likes of Airbnb, Facebook, Uber is a little bit um, less forthcoming with its open source, uh, but that's that's what we're it's what you're looking at that market. It's like what can do what for which company and which process. So it sounds like then with the, the state of the market, it, you've really got to go into this with your eyes open. When if, if you're going to be th if you think you need to buy software when the market's moving so quickly. Yeah, yeah, and there's a lot of utility, machine learning utility. Like voice, um, voice to text, it's just yeah, go on, it does it. Uh, it's a utility. It's not. It's almost not a competitive advantage anymore. That because it's a utility. What is the thing that's going to help you get further? So if you can build an app, you know, all the things that you're going to build in the app. There's certain expectations on what should be in an app now. People would expect that, and that's not that's that's not an added value anymore. It's this needs to happen. What's the other thing on top? You know, so removing people's need to cognitively decide, like make the decision for you, because we know what that is, and it's uh, like cash flow forecasting. I don't like doing cash flow forecasting because I have to think about it. I would like something to tell me you're at risk at this point in the in the in the month. Stop spending. <laughs> <laughs> That's fascinating, mm. Rob, because uh, all SAP customers have to do this stuff, as, 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 as we both know. Mm. And, uh, well, that, like, thank you, you've covered an awful lot of ground there, a lot of, a lot of areas. Maybe, for the benefit of our listeners, could you just net it out? Could you sum up the key takeaways of the, of the messages you've, you've, you've been giving us? Um, be wary of AI. Be wary of what you can do, because um, it, it can come from years and years of research. And we're, we're piggybacking off that, so the like of Stanford, and uh, they put a lot of effort into that. But we can any any customer can benefit from AI in in understanding language, natural language, and and uh, these various tools which are out there. But you you still need to understand what you want to do and why you're doing it. Are you doing a, a getting AI because you you think you need it, or do you actually need it? And that's really understanding what's where where you should go with it. That's a good conclusion for you. <laughs> great, great summary, great content. I'd finally like to thank you, Rob. And for our listeners, if do check out our SAP success report at resulting.com if you'd like to become even more successful. Thank you very much.